Hello, today we would be learning about various equipments used in chemistry lab. Yep, the first thing that we are gonna learn is beakers and beakers are very commonly used in the chemistry lab and they are actually a glass cup, a cylindrical cup with a notch like that for pouring out liquids. The edges of the beakers are parallel to each other and the opening and the base are having the same diameter and beakers are of various types like a glass beaker or a plastic one and they are used for storage and also for preparing certain chemicals and they can also be heated the glass ones not the plastic ones and they are of different sizes there is a 100 mils and a 250 mils in my hand and you can see those values written on the beakers those are the volume of fluid that you can take actually those uh, values are not accurate for accurate measurements we use a graduated cylinder which you will see soon yep. now we come to test tubes test tubes are elongated tubular piece of glassware which is used to heat or do small amount of chemical reactions as you can see the base of the test tube is rounded so that heat spreads evenly on all surface while heating the test tubes and the test tube has a elongated tubular shape so that the uh, reactants when undergoing the reaction would not splash out of the test tube usually and since the base of the test tube is rounded as you can see you cannot place the test tube on the uh, ground like normally when you keep the beakers and the flask so the test tubes has to be kept uh, in something called as a test tube rack so to prevent it from falling and this is called a test tube rack and test tube rack has pegs for keeping the test tube up uh, inverted and on the opposite side you can see those round shaped defects for keeping the test tube upright after a reaction so that they can sit upright. Now while heating the test tube we use this instrument called a test tube holder so that we don't burn our hands. And the test tube holder has a wooden handle and as you can see there is a lock for the test tube which is adjustable and while proceeding the lock forwards you tighten the test tube holder so that and adjust the diameter here you can see I keep a test tube in the holding position then I adjust the lock forwards so that the holder becomes tight and the test tube is firmly grasped in between the two prongs of the test tube now you can hold up the wooden handle and just heat the test tube so you prevent your hands from getting Burnt. Now to take out the test tube just drag the lock back and take it out. This is a reagent bottle and as the name says it's a bottle for reagents and a reagent bottle is used to store chemicals especially the corrosive acids and it also has a glass top and usually concentrated alkalis are not usually stored in glass bottles as they have a corrosive effect on the glass. Now reagent bottles are available in various sizes, here I have a, a large reagent bottle, a medium sized one and an even smaller reagent bottles you can see here. Now reagent bottles are not only transparent you can also have the, the darker colored reagent bottles and that's known as the amber colored reagent bottles for storing light sensitive chemicals like silver nitrate. Now as you can see the top of the reagent bottles are made up of glass. This is a wash bottle. Wash bottle is made up of plastic and it's a squeeze bottle actually and it's used to rinse the test tubes and other glasswares after we do an experiment. We store water in them and uh, I'll show you here. I've taken a beaker and I squeeze the wash bottle as since it's plastic, it's squishy and you can see while I squeeze the wash bottle, water comes out as a jet stream and it helps to rinse the instruments yeah. now this is a glass dropper with a rubber bulb and it is used to, 
take out liquid from one instrument and deliver it to another one and here I will show you here I got a beaker with some solution in that and I take out the fluid using the dropper and I can deliver it to another bottle either drop by drop like that or as fast as that yeah this is a very commonly used equipment in chemistry lab known as Erlen Mayer flask named after the scientist who discovered it it's also called the conical flask because the shape of the equipment is cone shape it's of various sizes available here I have a 100 milliliters conical flask a 250 milliliters conical flask and a larger one that is a 500 milliliters conical flask now conical flask and test tube serves the same purpose but the difference is that test tubes are used for uh, used in doing chemical reactions with very minute amount of chemicals and in early May flask we use more amount of chemicals the advantages are it has a flat bottom which is, and a narrow opening above and the edges are sloping towards each other so spillage of chemicals will be less and evaporation is also less compared to a beaker which have a parallel edges the Erlenmeyer flask have a sloping edge as you can see and the flat base will help it stand upright and the narrow opening helps prevent evaporation the sloping edges prevent the splash of chemicals from this the graduations on an Erlenmeyer flask are also not accurate same like beaker and we use a graduated cylinder for that yeah that's about Erlenmeyer flask This is a Florence flask also called as boiling flask. It's called Florence flask because it was discovered in Florence, Italy. The base of the flask is flat hence it's called flat bottom flask and that makes it different from a round bottom flask where all of the body of the flask is round. Now about uh, Florence flask uses, the main use of Florence flask is chemical reactions which require heating. Hence it's called boiling flask because this flask is used for heating purposes. And that makes it a different from the Erlenmeyer flask. The Erlenmeyer flask and the boiling flask both can be used for doing chemical reactions. But the boiling flask is more commonly used for reactions that require heating purposes. But this dictum is not followed usually. Hence the boiling flask is rarely used in the lab because people use the conical flask for heating also the difference structural difference between these two are the boiling flask as you can see it is having the edges which are c-shaped and the conical flask you can see the edges are sloping towards each other yeah. watch glass are circular shaped glassware which is very thin and it has a concave base the uses of watch glass one it is used to evaporate small amount of liquids to crystallize out the solids. Two, it is used to hold the solid substances for weighing in a balance. Three, it is used as a lid for covering the beakers to prevent evaporation. Watch glass should never be heated as they are fragile. Graduated cylinder, also known as a measuring cylinder, is a cylindrical piece of equipment which is either made up of glass or plastic which has very accurate measurements on them and this is used for taking out solutions accurately as I said the beakers and the flask have approximate values but on a measuring cylinder we have an accurate value and it has a hexagonal base this is a clamp fixed on a stand which will help us support equipments here I have a test tube kept on the clamp so that I don't need the help of a holder to catch it on turning this knob the clamp will open and close so that we can keep the equipment in that position the second knob which on turning will help us move the whole of the clamp set up or down so that we can regulate the height of the clamp now we have a third knob on turning the third knob we can change the axis of the clamp either on a slanting axis or a straight axis which will help us in heating purposes. Now that's about the clamp. 
now you can see that the clamp is fixed on a very long stand which has an iron base now this equipment is known as a volumetric flask it's a very expensive piece of glassware which you should be careful about while you are using in the chemistry lab it has a round shaped body with a very long neck and a glass lid this is very accurate piece of equipment used to create stock solutions in volumetric chemistry here you can see a white line of demarcation on the neck of the volumetric flask which will show the accurate amount of solution to be taken to make it a molar solution and that's all thank you for watching and please subscribe rate and comment